Hello, and welcome once again to Beetle University. I am Professor Moptop. And as we continue to learn all about Side 4 of the White Album, it's time to hear about another George song, the seventh Harrison composition from the Sessions. Back on Side 1, George had While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and then for Side 2, it was Piggies. Long, Long, Long finished off the third side, and he also had three other demos that would be demoed that would either wind up being recorded by another artist or appear on a solo George Harrison album many years later, and we've talked about all that. But what we haven't talked about yet is Savoy Truffle, and more specifically, Eric Clapton's Rotten Teeth. As we now know, George Harrison crossed paths with guitarist Eric Clapton in 1964 when he was playing with the Yardbirds. The two formed a lifelong friendship where they would collaborate, hang out, play guitars together, take drugs, and commiserate about their bands. George was upset about the treatment he was getting from his non-Ringo Beatles. Eric was annoyed with Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker, his two bandmates from Cream, who liked the Beatles, also had a large amount of ego-driven infighting and tension. In 1968, while all this was going on, Eric Clapton's dentist had advised him that he needed to stop eating so much candy and that his sweet tooth was causing his teeth to rapidly deteriorate. One day at George's, the two guitarists were hanging around complaining about their groups and Clapton found Harrison's stash, a box of candy, and even though he had a lot of cavities and always had a toothache, he simply had to eat them all. Keep in mind, not only was tooth decay an issue for Clapton, he also had general control issues and he was a fan of drugs. And speaking of drugs, one of Harrison's other inspirations for this week's topic may have been a bird song called Artificial Energy, the opening track from their January 1968 release, The Notorious Bird Brothers. The song features prominent horns, trippy drug talk, and the phrase, Ticket to Ride. The main inspiration of the song was Macintosh Good News Chocolates, the ones that Clapton was eating, George taking the bulk of the lyrics from the lid of the box. You know, where it has the picture that says which piece of delicious chocolate is which? Some of these candies are sung exactly as they were on the lid of the box, like the Cream Tangerine, which is a dark chocolate enrobed whipped tangerine nougat from the confectionery family. There's also the Montelamar, which is a specific nougat created over a thousand years ago, possibly in Egypt, Greece, or Arabia, crossing the Mediterranean Sea and given to the French by the Phoenicians in the 12th century. The Montelamarians to this day still exclusively make the candy in the south of France. Also, the cream tangerine, C-R-E-M-E, -E, is spelled differently than Clapton's psychedelic rock and roll power trio, Cream, as in the cream of the crop. A ginger sling, not to be confused with Cream's drummer, Ginger Baker, is a dark chocolate-covered hunk of dried and candied ginger. Dark chocolate has a higher raw cocoa content than milk chocolate. The pineapple heart from the song was changed slightly by George to help make things rhyme. It was actually the pineapple treat. The coffee dessert was also on the underside of the lid of the box, which, if you'll recall, is good news. Coffee dessert, yes, you know it's good news. But you have to have them all pulled out after the Savoy Truffle. George was writing in a new style, for him anyway, listing things from an actual real-life item and taking a few artistic license liberties similar to what John Lennon did for being for the benefit of Mr. Kite or what Paul did for Penny Lane. George turned the toffee and cherry cup into the cool cherry cream, this time spelled like Clapton's jazzy improvisational electric rock and roll three-piece. And the apple tart was also invented by Harrison, at least inside his head, the apple being a very common theme for the Beatles in 1968. Harrison even used the phrase apple cart in the unreleased Not Guilty. It sounds a bit like apple tart. I would have said the apple cart, I really want what I can get ahead. Coconut Fudge, adapted from the coconut and caramel candy, will blow down those blues. Maybe a hidden little message to Clapton, who was at the time trying very hard to turn his powerful and adventurous three-piece performance unit into a full-throttle electric blues band. 
Although George goes on to sing of his love and devotion to delicious candy, he ultimately warns of the results, which is, you'll have to have them all pulled out after the Savoy Truffle, which is the chocolate extract of a fungus folded into a ganache, dusted in cocoa powder. And they are way better than those chocolate home wheat biscuits that Yoko stole from George during the long, long, long sessions, which we discussed but hasn't actually happened yet in Beatle history, as that was the final offering from Harrison for the album, recorded a few days after Savoy Truffle. Everybody got all that? Harrison also mentions Obla oh, Dee, Obla oh, Da, which he wasn't an especially big fan of when the band spent several days recording and re recording it earlier in the sessions. George may have softened his opinion on the song after hearing the final product, or maybe he was taking an insulting shot at it by saying that we all know it, or maybe he just needed a rhyme. Thank you. <laughs> We're not sure if Clapton let him have any of his chocolates or not, but Derek Taylor was hanging around this day, and he suggested the line, you know that what you eat you are. Inspired by the trendy, flower powery 1968 acid drenched counterculture film all about the San Francisco hippie scene, You Are What You Eat. This is Super Spade, how are you? Fine. What are you going to be doing later on this afternoon? We're going to have a little groovy thing up tonight, and I'd like for you to stop by. It could be a groovier scene if you came over here. With the lyrics all finished up, George was all set to record his return to rock in early October of 68. And the next time we meet, We'll discuss the recordings for Savoy Truffle as we continue to learn a whole lot about the White Album. Until then, I am Professor Muptop.